Okay, there's four um, slides here. You may not take it all in as you watch it the first time. So you can watch it a couple of times or you can actually download these slides and spend a little bit more time looking at the hard copy. So let's have a look at the assumptions that's often um, ascribed to the pedagogical model. Firstly, that the concept of the learner is very much one where um, the student is dependent on the teacher. The task of the learner is to basically do what the teacher says, follow the teacher's direction. Uh, certainly very typical in the school, how typical that is in SP is something for you to think about, as are the following ones. So let's go through them. The role of the learner's experience. The, with uh, a pedagogy uh, model, there is an assumption that learners have little experience and the teacher's job is to focus on the transmission of knowledge and that's why um, we've had the traditional lecture as a predominant method. Readiness to learn, basically the students are ready when they're told um, to be ready by the teacher and that was my experience in school certainly, whether it applies in SP now, I don't know. Orientation to learning, that essentially the students see learning as acquiring the subject matter content. What is dished up is what they have to take in, digest and spill out for the exam. So it's a very linear content driven curriculum. And finally, for the students, the motivation is really more of an extrinsic one. Pressures from teachers, parents, competition, grades, consequences of the failure primary motivation. So that's something to get a general feel on and think about, well, is this what we're doing here in the main? Does that apply to the learner in this? But, okay, let's move on to the second slide for comparison, the andragogical. Now, here we've got a different concept of the learner. The adults, self-directed, take responsibility and they want much more of a locus of control over how they participate. They have clear goals about what they want. And they come to the situation with a much wider range of experience and personal identity, if you like a maturity, worldliness, whatever. And uh, if we don't value this experience, or if it's ignored by the teacher, um, that can have certain consequences for us as trainers. So um, issues to do with the, the manner of, the, of our interactions may be something to consider here. Again, one might say this applies in SP to our students as well. Okay, readiness to learn. The the major difference here is that for adults, they have a clear sense of direction and they something has gone on in their life, they need to get a qualification or they feel that they need to reskill or they have a motivation to perhaps even change career. Um, so the readiness is a, a very tangible thing, not simply that they're there and they're told to do it. Okay, orientation to learning. Um, again, it's to do with a problem, something that they need to learn, and they want to learn the competence. They're less interested in underpinning knowledge or theory. Motivation, um, it's seen more to be an internal rather than external thing, uh, as you can see written here. Um, though not all the evidence would necessarily um, support that. And my own experience is that a lot of adults want to get qualifications and earn more money. Okay, let's now take these two, if you like, different models, approaches, and say, well, how does that affect the way we go about instruction? Well, let's take the more pedagogic structuring first. And it's often seen in terms of content design versus process design. Um, so let's go through this and see if it makes sense. In a pedagogical model, it's more content design. What do we need to teach? How do we organize it, sequence it, break it up, transmit? How do we package the knowledge? 
Whereas with a andragogical model that is more about the process of learning, it's helping the adult learners to um, acquire the content, but not through direct instruction lectures, but more by looking at the ways in which they can go about the learning. And this is a very much negotiated thing. So here's something to read, here's uh, opportunities to uh, go to this visit, meet these people, those kind of things. So it's more about establishing a kind of negotiated strategy procedures for um, dealing with the content knowledge. And that will involve identifying relevant resources, peers, materials, uh, online community, linking them up, uh, setting up communication, collaboration platforms, learning communities. And increasingly now we're seeing, aren't we, with um, blended learning, online learning, that uh, the idea of you know, social collaboration, setting up communities, and a more differentiated approach to learning uh, and greater flexibility is, is coming into play. Uh, the question is, is this something that is specifically for adult learners or could similar things apply to younger learners? Okay, we're coming to the last slide. And is a a sizable quote from the famous um, Rogers, um, not as famous as the more famous Carl Rogers of the 1960s, but Rogers pretty famous in terms of teaching adults. And you, I'm not going to read the, the, the quote, you can do that, but let's pick up on just a few things. And that is that, that as an adult, um, facilitator, teacher, instructor, you actually in with a group of people who have may, may have done more things in life than you, may know more about uh, many areas of life than you, have done a lot of different things that you've never ever done and they may not give you credibility or be impressed simply because you are the trainer, you are chair, you know, to use the Singaporean isn't it? So have a little read of that and think about what this may mean for the way you would relate to adult learners or certainly more mature adult learners. And there's a nice question that Rogers poses here is that adult learners, the request of adult learners to anybody who instructs them is can you really help me? Now, again, does this have a different impact than perhaps what our students expect of us here in SP? So, go through this um, lecture again if you need to download it, think about it. And then we're going to move on to some collaborative sharing on the Padlet that I mentioned earlier and focus on the extent to which these different approaches, models, really pan out as separate, distinct ways of going about teaching for our students and younger students or for more adults. And whether the, the pedagogic arrangements, again, are, are differentiated, that we should be using a, a pedagogic model for our students and a process model for the CET. Uh, teachers and particularly this last quote from Rogers is how does that impact perhaps some of the things that we need to be aware of and some of the things that we might need to do in terms of the way we conduct our practice.